I'm Leslie Wade with the Charleston Parks Conservancy here at Corinne Jones Park and Community Garden. I'm here with David Pastry with the Clemson Architecture Center in Charleston. We've worked with them on five projects and this structure here is our fifth project with um, his students and the Architecture Center. And David's going to take us through a tour of what his students were thinking through their design and the process of being able to do this. Take it away, David. Great, thanks Leslie. So, uh, this, like Leslie said, this is our fifth project we've done together. Um, it's a great opportunity for our students to get a chance to um, work hands-on with the community and uh, to work through community charrettes, present before neighborhood associations, uh, work with a client, with a budget, a time frame, and at the end of it all, we build these structures. Um, this one here we did uh, the spring semester of 2019, so it is uh, one year old today pretty much um, and so uh, I'm going to talk you through a little bit about what the students went through through the design process um, now this is also the site of where we had our second project with the Parks Conservancy and um, on the north end of the park near the tennis courts uh, we did a shade and seating structure back in I think 2012 mm -hmm. uh, when the park had a playground upgrade and so that pr that project there uh, really was a guiding force in a lot of the design decisions that came into uh, doing the, the pavilion structure here. One thing that we wanted to make sure when we put a, uh, a structure here for the new community garden, um, each one of the parks is a little different. Some of the parks, uh, or the community gardens, I, I mean, some of them, they were, the structure was built before community garden was even there. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of them have been built once the community garden was there, but the park was not really utilized. And in this case, we had a unique situation where we had a very utilized park and no community garden yet. And so the structure really had to be adaptable to both serve the playground and the community garden. So the students took that into consideration. Um, the structure really kind of divides in two halves. Um, and the two halves are separated with a a wall that runs down the center. Um, this this uh, wall is underneath probably the biggest focal element. It's a three foot wide gutter. And this three foot wide gutter catches uh, rainwater from the two butterfly roofs and it diverts it into two directions. Um, the majority of it runs to the south and it feeds our uh, cistern. Um, Leslie, I don't remember how many so gallons it is. It's a 400 gallon cistern and we're able to use the rainwater from this um, to water our community beds in the garden. And then the overflow from this cistern, depending on the amount of rain that we get, goes into a rain garden on the other side of the pavilion. Yeah, now we've gone through a series of different storage options when we've done the gardens. Um, and each time we do it, we're, we're learning from the past uh, projects. Um, in this situation, we're trying an, a newer method in which we've sort of created stalls in which tools can be locked. So students fabricated um, sort of some steel structures here that can come across and lock tools in in a, in, uh, in a safe way. All the handled tools and any of the big wheelbarrows can get, get chained between all of those. Um, what we found is sometimes when we're putting things in lockers or storing them, they kind of, like you do at home, they get thrown in there and it becomes a cluttered mess behind the doors. What we're finding is that if we don't put these behind doors, people don't wonder what's inside the doors to want to steal them. They see that they're just rakes and shovels, um, so there's not been any theft that's going on with this. And people tend to keep it a little cleaner and more straightened up because it is on display as part of the park. Um, we do have some uh, lower storage and things that we can kind of keep in there, some fertilizers and whatnot. Lastly, what we should show is uh, one of the key components, for, especially for the community harvests. Can I get on that? That's what we The community harvests is we have a lot of cleaning that has to go on um, across the vegetables. But that doesn't happen too often. And so we've started making our sinks and our cleaning um, areas something in which they're just tabletops when we don't need them, but when we do, we can convert it to a sink. And, and the so, whole idea with this, sorry yeah. to interrupt, but it's a community gathering space. It's not just uti utilitarian for the garden, it's for the entire community to come mm -hmm. enjoy. So that's yeah, important. Yeah, so we, we kind of expect this is where birthday cakes and uh, pizzas for birthday parties for the playground kind of are happening along this uh, counter. 
all the components of the build were, were constructed by our students. Uh, there was at no point did we have hired contractors come in. Any of the steel fabricated points of our roof structure were all um, fabricated in our metal shop. Um, it kind of does a little bit of a twist, so if you ever get a chance to see sort of a broader view of the structure, it, uh, it definitely has a different look as you kind of walk around it because at different points you see the butterfly and other times you just sort of see a, a sort of peeling up lifting of a roof. So it's, it's a project that we're really proud of and we're looking forward to the, the next ones uh, we do with the Conservancy. Thank you, David, yeah. and we'll see you guys soon.